Hey everyone! Today we're going to look at advanced color changing. And here I've got this picture of Thomas. And Thomas is sitting on a park bench and it's obviously fall. And he's wearing a blue sweater. Well what if we wanted this sweater to be orange or a light brown to kind of match the fall background? There are a few different ways to go about this. And what we're not going to do is use the color replacement tool. And there are are some reasons for that. Mostly because it's extremely difficult to go from a darker color to a lighter color, so if we wanted to go from this blue to an orange it may look a little strange. I know there are multiple different settings that you can use with that color replacement tool, but let's kind of walk through that. So if you hit B, uh, that'll take you to your brush tool, or you can just uh, right click on it and we want to go to color replacement. And in our color palette we'll just select uh, something orangey or pumpkin-y, whatever that happens to look like. And you've got all of these different settings here. You can change your mode, you can change your limits, um, you, you can change a lot of different options. But you notice when you start to paint things on, it just doesn't quite do it. And yeah, there are different ways you can go about this. But for the most part, it really doesn't look natural. And it's just not good for this particular type of image. You can see we kind of have some trouble spots here. So we're going to go ahead and delete that duplicate that I created. And we're going to create a new one. We're actually going to change the color of his sweater using the good old fashioned selection tool. Thankfully, in the newer versions, we don't have to use the magic wand, so you're not, like, trying to select, you know, all the different types of blues, and it's not a real pain. You can actually just hit your quick selection tool. I'll zoom in a bit. And go through, just kind of drag along the blue of a sweater. And it actually does a fairly decent job right off, kind of selecting all of the blue. There are some trouble spots, and we're going to go over that. Uh, we can see where it selected a green shade out here, so we're going to hit our Alt tab. And that will allow us to go through and remove that selection. And there are some other areas here, but we'll get to that. But right now, we just want to go ahead and make a mask of that. The biggest problem with this image isn't necessarily the blue. It's something that we don't really see, or we won't until we try to change the color of the sweater and then it doesn't work out too well. You've got all of these little fuzzies on the side of his sweater that cannot be selected using the Refine Selection tool. And to kind of give you an idea of what that's going to look like, we're going to go to Layer, New Adjustment Layer, in Black and White. This is going to turn our image black and white, and then we want to hit our cyan and blue channels, which are the color channels for his sweater, and turn them all the way down. So then when we zoom in, we see this white outline that's obviously not the background, and follows the line of his sweater. That's going to become a massive trouble area for us, but we're going to overcome that. So delete that layer and hit your control tab and the mask that'll reselect that area for us and we want to duplicate our background once more we want to put this on top go to select modify border this is going to allow us to select our border I've got uh, four typed in here I think that's pretty good for us now if we zoom in and we see, oh man, that's kind of cutting out some of the fuzzy still, it's really not going to help me all that much, then you can go to, with, with that selected, don't click off of it, go to select, modify, expand. And we're going to expand it in an additional, say, two pixels. And I think that looks fine. Yeah, that looks like it does a pretty good job of selecting all that. And we're going to create a mask just around that area. Go ahead and create a little folder so we can kind of keep this nice and organized. Now go to Layer, New Adjustment Layer, Selective Color. 
and well, these settings are okay for now. You really don't need to rename it unless you feel the urge. If it goes inside of your folder, just drag it outward. Maybe if you don't fail at dragging like I do. There we go. And you want to link this selective color layer to our masks down here. So if you just drag between them with your mouse, hit your Alt tab, and you'll get that little pop-up, click, and that links the two. This gives you the ability to adjust your RGB settings and your CMYK settings. So you have your red, green, blue, and then you have your uh, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. That's your K. But additionally, it gives you the option to edit your whites and your neutrals, and that's going to be pretty important for us in this particular color selection. But right now we're going to go to our blues. Within each channel, we can edit the CMYK properties. So in the blue channel, if I want to remove cyan, I can drag it to the left. If I want to add more, I can drag it to the right. And that's indicated with these numbers here, either negative or positive. And then you can do that in your cyan as well. But we're going to work with blue first. We're going to take out most of that. We're going to add in some, a little bit of magenta. And bring the yellow up pretty high. And then with the cyan, we're going to drag more down. The magenta somewhere around there. And then drag the yellow up. So now we have this kind of weird, uh, almost nasty looking pearlescent purple green thing going on. Well, that's when we go into our neutrals. And our neutrals, they pseudo represent your gammas. So if I want to turn down the cyan in this, well, we get this really bright color. So we can kind of get this new color happening. And we want to turn down the magenta just a little bit. We want to create something orange. But to match the actual picture, you know, the picture is pretty subtle. There's nothing neon or, or blown out. There's not really much contrast to the color. The, the vividness of the image is not too high. So uh, we can adjust our blacks. And I think that, that looks fairly decent. So let's go over to our trouble areas. This is going to require a bit of painting in your mask, but actually not too much. When we go over to our individual masks, we have our border. We turn that on and off. You can see why we actually did the border, because there are areas here where the reflection from his blue sweater actually caused a slight reflection of blue onto his skin. We turn that back on. And that also kind of fixes our little fuzzy halo issue happening there. But you can see this is a really hard line. Um, and, and just keeping it blue looks even worse. So you have to soften that up a bit. And we're going to just kind of take down our fill level just a little bit. Now you probably want to take some more time, kind of go around the edges and do it a little less sloppy for your own product, but that's the basic gist, and really if you want to go around and change the color of it, you can just you know, do your selective color, and because you haven't changed anything, you haven't merged any masks, and you still have this link to everything, you can go through and change it to really whatever color you want. It's a pretty versatile setting. You know, maybe maybe take some more time around hair areas like that, but I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time uh, with this actual tutorial. I just wanted to get the process down. But all in all, 
you know, it, it looks really clean, it looks natural, and that's the most important thing.